If you followed our guide on Ergeddon, you know that WPA networks are still vulnerable to brute force attacks once you grab the network handshake. Now in order for this attack to work, the password has to be on the dictionary file or the password list that you're attempting to brute force with. Now usually a hacker will use a word list like the Rocky word list, which is comprised of stolen passwords, so you know they have a reasonable chance of success because they're actually used by real people. But if those don't work, there are options to use your knowledge of a target to create your own word lists which have a higher probability of success. We'll show you how this works with a tool called The Mentalist on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Creating a custom word list is both an art and a science, because it requires you know two things. The first is a little bit about the person who created the password, and the second is a little bit about the tool that you're using to do what's called word mangling. Now, most of the time, if you're using a pre-compiled password list of just a bunch of stolen passwords, you don't really have the ability to filter it down to what you know about a target. Using something like the Mentalist, we can include things like pet names, significant dates, even things that are more specific to a person like the language that they use or requirements that are uh, specific for a website that they're logging into. Now, if they have a, a organization that they're a part of that requires them to choose a password that has specific requirements like uh, eight digits long or it must require a, a uppercase character or a number or something like that. Those are examples where if you know the rules, you can quickly eliminate any passwords that won't meet those specifications and speed up the rate at which these sorts of brute force attacks will work. Now, in order to do this, we'll need to understand how word mangling works. So let's take a look at the way that the, the mentalist actually does this with a base list of maybe stolen passwords or even just the English dictionary. So. There are a couple functions that the mentalist uses in order to create custom uh, passwords, and those are append, prepend, substitute, and modify caps. So when we're passing a word list into this, we'll start with the original word, and this will, will be repeated for every single word on the original kind of seed list, and it will be passed through what's called a chain. Now a chain just has a couple of nodes, and each node has one of these functions I've mentioned, append, prepend, whichever, uh, starting from the base uh, node, which is just the, the root word. In this case, we're going to use Bob as our root word, and we're going to pass it through a substitute and then an append node to get a variety of different passwords that we think this person might have chosen. Maybe their name's Bob. So let's give you an example, just so it's not confusing, so we can see what the mentalist would do to a password if we're starting out with the uh, seed word of Bob. Let's see what kind of varieties we can get. So if we know that Bob might have chosen a specific kind of password, we might get a list that we can put through a brute forcer and uh, try to brute force the password. So we'll start with Bob. And if we add a substitute node that says, hey, we want to substitute the capital B in Bob for an eight, just a number eight. Maybe Bob's a hacker and he likes lead speak. We can, when we pass it through that, see that the result is both Bob and eight OB. So now we have two different passwords instead of one. And when we pass it to the next function, which is to append uh, every number up until, let's say, six right here, we'll get that split into six results each, or actually seven, because we'll include zero. And then we'll end up with uh, both the mangled version, if you will, of Bob with all the numbers at the end of it, plus one without any numbers, but also the modified version of Bob from the previous node. So as you can see, when we put these nodes together, you can end up with a tremendous amount of passwords. Because if we had switched this list, then we would be first multiplying it by six effectively and then running it through this other mangler to change uh, all these versions to also have different variations. And we can end up producing so many passwords that our list gets a little bit bloated. So it's important to know a little bit about the way we do this to create an effective password list. But we'll show you how you can integrate things like pet names and other small things to uh, append, prepend and otherwise modify the base words in an existing kind of seed password list that you think might be likely for that person to have based their password on. So to do this, you'll actually not need anything special. 
Um, the mentalist comes as a pre-compiled binary for most operating systems, so you can go directly to the website and download a version that will just run on your operating system. If you want, you can download and run it in Kali Linux, but for this example, it's actually not necessary. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, you can get started. Uh, it's actually running on my Mac right now, uh, but it, I believe it also works on Windows and Linux systems. So let's dive in. In order to start creating a custom word list, you need to know a little bit about the user or the target that you're going after. We'll use a couple tools to create an initial seed list and then pass it through uh, the mentalist as a word mangler in order to increase our odds of getting a match. Now, first we'll need to use a tool to create the initial list. So we'll use CUPP, also known as the Common User Passwords Profiler. So this is an interactive script that will allow us to create an initial seed from things like the person's personal details. So let's take a look at how that works. We'll go to CD CUPP. And if you don't have cup, then you can go ahead and also just git clone it from here with git clone and uh, this link right there. So if you do have it, then once you're inside the folder, you can type ls and see cup.py, and you'll just type sudo python cupp.py and then tack i to trigger the interactive script. So once this is started, it'll start asking for the personal information of the target that we're going after. So let's start. Uh, the first name in this is going to be, of course, Buck. And the last name is going to be Nasty. Uh, his nickname, of course, is going to be Papa. And his birth date is going to be 01061922. His partner's name is going to be Michelle. Her nickname is going to be Lil Susie with a Z. And her birth date is going to be 0108 2001. And they do have a child, a miracle child. Its name is Skeeter. And its nickname is Magoo. And the child's birth date is uh, 09. 07, 19, no, yeah, gotta keep it consistent, 2013. Brilliant. And then they have a pet, of course, and its name is Roomba. Uh, he works for a company. That company's name is, um, let's see, Buck Nasty Limited. And do we want to add some other keywords we know about the victim? Let's add one. Let's say that uh, we're just going to say they're into juice, ninjas, and we know that they're really particularly into uh, ultimate frisbee. So do we want to add special characters at the end of words? We're not going to do that right now. Um, adds random numbers. We can do that, but we're not we don't need to. Do we want to put it in delete mode? So this will transform some of the results into numbers uh, if the person is into sort of like hacking script. In this case, we won't. Uh, so now we've written a password file that has 7,563 words, which is a great start, but we probably haven't gotten it yet. So let's go ahead and kick it up to the next level and open the mentalist. So this will allow us to take our initial file, which we should be able to see listed right here. Uh, yep, buck.txt. And if we go into this file, let me actually open it, we should be able to see a whole bunch of, uh, there we go, things related to the information that we put in. So we see M nasty, uh, nasty papa six, there we go, um, M magoo, uh, nasty magoo uh, 60, okay. Uh, so we see all kinds of great results here that are probably related uh, because they have birth dates, they have significant dates for either the person or their family, uh, we see a papa zero twenty two and one all these different wonderful guesses that may or may not be the real password. So let's expand this by opening the mentalist and then bringing this file into it by uh, clicking on the plus button and then adding the custom file. So the custom file we can select buck.txt, open it, 
and we see, uh, let's get rid of the English dictionary, we see we have our 7,000 words, and we can start adding nodes to this chain in order to create a, a custom result. So let's say that we want to add caps. Uh, so we will have some all uppercase, some lowercase, and we want to have one that's, let's say, has a, the first letter's uppercase and the rest are all lowercase. So we can just add a new uh, case modifier. We can press uh, this for lowercase all, add another for uppercase all, and then add one more for uppercase first, lowercase rest. So this has kicked us up to 22,000 words, but now let's add another one where we add a, a number at the end, because let's say we know that the person's account requires that they include a number in their password. So we'll do a uh, append here, which will let us select, let's say, numbers from 1 to 100. Now, this is important to notice that it went up to 2 million passwords because we're taking all these results, and for every one password that goes into this node, 100 guesses come out of this node. So you can greatly increase the number of uh, passwords by running it through a function like this, and it really can uh, beef up the number of passwords that are in your list that still, keep in mind, very targeted to the personal details of this particular person. So uh, in order to export this, we have a couple of different and rather interesting options. We can process them as the full word list, which will give us a complete list of all these different possible passwords, or we can do the based words only if we just want to export you know, the ones we were working with that we maybe generated in this first step. But the real value here is in generating Hashcat or John the Ripper files, uh, rules. And what that means is it will actually generate this list we've created here dynamically, uh, so we don't need to uh, create a full word list ourselves. We can let the program create it and then uh, run it against our captured handshake dynamically, and the word list never exists in its full form. It's just created kind of on the go. So if you have a great processor, that's a really smart way of doing it because you don't need to sacrifice a lot of storage space, and instead you can just, ask, just export this as a, a series of commands for that particular program. So we'll do a full word list and call it Big Papa dot text, and we should see it. Uh, this is again two million two hundred ninety one five hundred and eighty nine passwords are now done in the amount of time it took me to say that, and we can open up Big Papa dot text, and it is a huge file that uh, oh my god we can scroll through, and we can see all these great uh, very small differences in each of these, but we can see. McGoo Nasty 722, and then we see it with the, with the M capitalized, and then there's a version with a all lowercase. This really exhaustively kind of goes after some nicknames this person might have for themselves or other people, or um, a lot of the different things that uh, a person will typically use when they're looking at creating a password. So this is a really exciting way that you can go from just a couple pieces of knowledge that you've scrounged, scrounged up on the internet about a particular person and end up creating a, a very tailored password list to either that organization's password requirements or that individual's preferences for um, you know, creating a password from the things around them or the things that they see. This is a much smarter way of going after a brute forcing attack because most people complain that brute, for brute forcing attacks don't work. And that's usually only true if you don't know anything about the target and you don't know anything about the way that they might craft their passwords, either because of uh, requirements from the website they're logging into or because of the way that they've created passwords before or the things around them. So it's always smart to start with the most logical options, and this is pretty much the best way to go about it if you have some scraps of information about the target that can be used to create your own password list that's not just a bunch of random stuff stolen from the internet. So following this method, you can go from zero passwords to 2.5 million passwords that are specifically tailored in just a matter of minutes, if not seconds. A little bit of research and a good word mangler like The Mentalist can greatly increase the efficiency of a brute force attack against a WPA handshake that you've captured. Now in order to do this, you need to make sure you know a little bit about the person, because these tools and other tools like CUP, C-U-P-P, the Common User Profile Password Profiler, ask an interactive series of questions about the victim to determine a number of likely passwords they might have picked based on a significant date or a spouse's name or maybe the name of a pet, for example. Now, systems like these work better against specific networks where you might know a little bit about the operator rather than the average random uh, target that you'll go after, but you can still greatly increase your efficiency in, let's say, a place that doesn't speak the same language as you by building a custom password list based on the local language rather than just using a general one that has uh, primarily English results.
That's it for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.